Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Here today, I will be showing you how I make my stop motions. This is a behind the scenes race for season five, race eight at Gateway. So if you have no clue what happened and didn't see the race, go watch that one first because I don't really feel like spoiling. So that's your disclaimer. Um, just know that you will find out who the winner is in this race along with some major plot points and crashes. Um, anyways, this is how I start making my track. Oh, apologies first, I am a little bit sick, so, uh, just bear with me. But anyways, this is kind of how I make my tracks. These walls are like a styrofoam thing that I absolutely hate using. I actually switched two races after this to poster board. I haven't actually filmed a race with the poster board yet, but... I will be soon, starting probably later today. Um, here's how I make the lineup. I essentially just pick drivers and put them wherever. And I try to make it somewhat realistic. And if I forget somebody, I just put them at the back and pretend they failed inspection. Which is what happened to Tyler Reddick at Allentown. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. Anyways, there's your lineup for today. I wanted Kyle Busch to be up front in the 18 in his final race in the 18 before I got an 8 car. So... Yeah, that's how I make the lineup. <clears throat> and pretty much the track is just made out of Sharpie and uh, green crayons for the grass. And I also use gray to try to give the track some color. And then I also use black to make a racing line. And that pit wall is weather stripping. Unfortunately, that's all the weather stripping I had. So I couldn't make walls with the entire racetrack using that. Um, here I am, uh, filming stuff. This is the ones to watch. It has to be. It's the only time in the pre-race I film car or take pictures of cars so closely. But yeah, essentially I just kind of go over the cars that I choose and I, uh, take a picture of them and then say that they're one to watch because they're supposed to be fast. And... All right, that's the ones to watch. To be honest, I completely forget who were the ones to watch for this race, other than I think Christopher Bell, because, you know, started to uh, run away with the championship this race. He would end up winning back-to-back, -back, spoiler alert, with this race being the first of his two back-to-back -back wins. Anyways, moving on now, uh, you saw me adjust the lighting. This is because it's time to have them, like, roll off now. Uh, surprise, surprise, that's how you make a stop motion. You take a little car, you move it, you take a picture, and you repeat many thousand times until you are driven to insanity. There's a big screw that I usually try to avoid in the platform I build my tracks on because the cars, like, roll off of it, and sometimes if I hit it hard enough on accident, it'll actually rip the paper from the track. I completely forgot about that for this track, so it's there. This is how I make the starting lineup. So on my phone, I have pictures of all the next-gen cars that I own, but, like, real pictures. Using InShot, I go to uh, the collage feature, and then I select four at a time in the order that they're lining up, and then I set the uh, aspect to 16 by 9, which is, you know, the YouTube standard one. And then I resize them to try to either move the car up so the uh, sign-up doesn't really block it. Or I just try to make it bigger. And then I put whoever is signed up as that driver underneath. Trevor Banana. That's my friend Corey. He is under Kyle Busch. I let him choose because, you know, he's a really good friend of mine. So I usually let him choose. Only time I don't think I did was last season. And you could tell because he was Eric Jones, not Kyle Busch. Um, right. So this is a somewhat lengthy process because, of course, I have to do this throughout the whole field. The next race I'm filming has 37 cars, so that means I have to do this like nine times. Plus I have to have one for the back row, so technically ten times. Well, nine and a quarter. 
Um, if someone's name is too big, I will abbreviate it to, you know, be able to fit it without making it ridiculously small. Or I will, you know, make it two lines, like TMCS there. Now on to filming. This is, I believe, the end of lap one. And uh, this is one of the last races that I filmed in which many of the shots were just one car in front of the field. And then I move everybody up once I am done with a shot. And then I move on, get another angle. This one has a lot of cars in the shot. I tried getting more in this race. You know, more cars in, in frame. Didn't really work out too well at times, but the thought was there, which is what matters. So you can see them now all going into turns one and two. If I have motivation, I could usually get a stop motion done in a week to a week and a half. Probably like 15 hours of filming-ish. These things take a while to make. All right, here's the big one on the restart. I'm proud of this one because I made it smooth. Chase Elliott went flying after he jumped up on the side of the six, and there were a bunch of favorites involved, including Chase, Ross, Kyle. So here it is. Many cars involved. So Smith in the 51 stayed out because he pit on the first caution of the race, which I believe was for Denny Hamlin. And he got a bunch of wheel spin into one on the restart and then just got run into from behind from, I believe, Ross Chastain. Here I'm just trying to like get Chase up and make it look smooth. It's definitely the toughest part because this putty at times cannot be the stickiest substance in the world and sometimes it causes problems, but it didn't here and it hasn't recently. You'll see what I mean in my NASMA race um, at the end of August. Not, not going to spoil too much more outside of that. And then pretty much here, I... Uh, yeah, this crash went on a bit more, and I didn't realize I was going out of frame on my iPad, which was filming this whole thing. So um, most of the crash is kind of going out of frame now. As I just tried to get, you know, smooth mov movements and also make the crashes long enough to where they look good, you know? And then, yeah. I don't think I went through the process of how you, like, go through the crash other than that. Truex just barely getting by this wreck. I forgot he did that. I forgot I made him take a very questionable line that was pointed straight towards the wreck until the very last second. Yeah, no, I don't think I show how you make a crash. Anyways, you just take pictures of the wrecked cars, and then you kind of take pictures of the pace lap cars, and then... Here we go, this is the race restart. You can see it's stop motion studio there. And Larson jumping out on Dylan because Dylan is also on very old tires. Dylan finished like 25th or something in this race. He really fell back. As This is Christopher Bell coming around. I believe this is the checkered flag. If Yeah, definitely the checkered flag. I don't move cars up that far. Unless it is the checkered flag and I don't have to film with them anymore. And then this is, well, technically before the checkered flag, but not really. I filmed this after the checkered flag. This was Truex wrecking on the final lap in the final corner and DNFing from the race very late. This was a very smooth accident. I'm very proud with how this one came out. And you could just see him pound the wall in turns three and four there. And I believe that's everything. So time to start wrapping things up here. After the race, I just kind of go into in shot and get the points. I have a 
chart with all the points in which I add them up using my format. And that's pretty much all there is to it, guys. So thank you all for watching. I, oh, well, I also add, you know, music and stuff, but thank you all for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. There will be a, 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 a link in the description below to see the actual race and the product. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day.